Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick video on data modeling and what are the processes involved when we bring data into Power BI and what are the steps. Uh, so let's start. So I've, I've done this uh, quick diagram where uh, data modeling is about uh, bringing data into Power BI and, and then storing it in such a way so it's easier to create the reports and build ad hoc reporting. So uh, if you look on the left hand side, you have you could have multiple data sources. So you have to decide what data you want to load. And when you're deciding the what data, uh, about the data you want to load, you probably want to look at which is the best source of truth and which database I should get what data from. So it could also be context specific. For example, you have SAP database or you could have your uh, database which talks about contact call centers or so it depends on what data you want, but also uh, there might be two databases which might have the same data. Then you have to decide which is the best source of truth. Or you could use one and then enhance uh, using the other. You might also want to decide how much of data you want. So the retention, for example, there might be some regulatory requirements. So you want to know how much data you want to pull in. And then once you've decided what data to load, you basically do an ETL. So you define a set of rules to pull that data in, which could include data quality rules. It could, rules, it could be formatting rules like I want my data to be in a certain format or all my currency is going to be in USD or for anything else. So all those rules you can define and they might go into the ETL layer. And from here you can load the data into the database. So that's one way, but you could also bypass uh, this process by directly hooking on to the databases using Power Query. And then, so essentially the data goes from the database directly into uh, Power BI. So that's, that's so you basically got uh, data to load, then you've got ETL rules, and then you load the data, which could be in the database or could be in the Power BI file. So once you uh, load the data into the uh, Power BI file, um, normally uh, it would be a dimensional model. Uh, so I would recommend looking at the differences between third normal form and the dimensional model. And uh, it's uh, easier to do uh, analytical reporting using a dimensional model. So typically you would model data in Power BI uh, and follow more of a dimensional model. Uh, and then uh, once you've uh, created this data model and you've defined all the relationships between the tables. So for example, you could have a sales table and that is linked to a dimension table, which is date and the geography and the product. So you defined all these relationships between different tables. So it's easy to create reports. And then on top of that, you could define measures and columns. So you could think of it as creating Excel formulas on top of what you already have stored in your Power BI file. And how that would help is that uh, you would be able to uh, do ad hoc analysis on the fly because those formulas would get cre uh, cal calculated when you try to uh, uh, run the report. So that's pretty much the data modeling process. So essentially you've got data to load one, uh, ETL rules, uh, deciding the data quality rules or the formatting rules. You load the data which could be into Power BI or the database which could be SQL Server. Uh, then you define the relationships uh, between the various tables and then uh, you define the measures and columns which is where DAX comes in. Uh, so uh, just to recap again, decide what is needed. So what, when and why. What data do you need? When do you need it? Why do you need it? Uh, define ETL rules. So you could probably have how, how, how do I extract the data? How much data do I need? What is my retention period? Load the data to the relevant table. So uh, define the target structures and load the data in a dimensional format. Uh, define relationships between the, the tables and then you basically use DAX to create or define columns and measures. Uh, so uh, in this video, we've uh, just gone through the basics of data modeling, a few concepts. It's a fairly detailed topic and I'm not trying to cover everything up here, but just to give you an overview of the process. Uh, I hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to my channel and like my videos if you enjoy what I'm doing. Do let me know if you would like me to take any specific topics. Cheers. Bye.